All right. Uh, thank God it's Friday mind emission coming from the toad cam in New York Toad City. What are the basics? I'm, I'm thinking a lot today. For some reason, I've been thinking a lot. We're coming up on the, the end of the year and many people that I've been speaking with, interesting people, have been thinking in, in a summary way, kind of like we're all unconsciously wrapping up everything we talked about or wrapping up where we've been in our personal journeys, our intellectual journeys, our erotic journeys. Um, kind of a year-end summation. There have been a lot of different conversations that have a kind of a summary quality. So, you know, what did this year's what did this year's great karmic cycle, turning those great karmic wheels, lead us to? What kind of final summation can I possibly give of all the things that I've learned trying to do these tubes and the many, many different people and the now 17,000 plus, you know, working on 18,000, that's a, that's a lot of hits. Um, I'm surprised, you know, because the last time I turned around it was 15,000. So I know a lot of people are watching these things, even though in small doses per tube, it's really adding up. The message is getting out there. What, what could I say to, to, to sort of say, all right, as we're moving in on the, the holiday where we kind of transcend our, our narrow selves, I think that's one of the kind of psychic purposes of these um, quasi-religious holidays is, uh, and religious for some people and completely commercial and plastic for others. But we all kind of converge on this moment like, okay, um, what do we have to celebrate? What do we have to learn from? What are, what, what are the great gains of, of wisdom and understanding that we can, we can attribute to this year's psychic work? What have, what have we learned from it all? A time of questions, I'm sure. What I would suggest, what I would propose, uh, John Grinder is always proposing ideas. Last night I went to some uh, very, very shishi burger place, one of these places that has truffle burgers and burgers made from rare cuts of Wagyu beef and man, those are good burgers. You can't, if you're at my age, if you're 54 years old, you can, you can only eat so many of those burgers. They're basically cholesterol bombs, but man, they're good. You know, I could maybe I could maybe go for one of these like every every few months before I just completely throw my um, my uh, my blood lipids off into some kind of uninsurable uninsurable stratosphere. But I I, I really love those um, love those burgers, man. You know, in a total old factory gustatory way, I just love it, and I love this place, and I love the staff. I just crazy about the staff. They're they're the sweetest kids. They're the most. They're, they're well trained. Whoever's running this restaurant has taken um, taken a lot of very eager beaver young people who really want to be uh, in the restaurant business in the hospitality business. And boy, can you tell the difference between people who really want to be there and really enjoy that kind of work and really enjoy uh, being in the restaurant business ver versus people who are just being uh, it, tormented by some fascist guy who's trying to, to milk it for all the money that they're going to get out of it. So yeah, you know, the attitude, I, I think, the attitude you bring to things, uh, the real deep down get-go attitude you bring to things makes a hugest difference. And this place is a blast. Uh, this, this place is, I, I'm probably one of the old fogies in there. And most of these, these people are uh, young, probably grotesquely overpaid uh, investment banker kids and hedge fund kids, you know, in their 30s. <laughs> Women, to me, that are under 40 seem a little immature. <laughs> yeah, man, that's showing my age, you know. It, I, once they get around 45, they, they seem to kind of know something about life. I used to think 45-year-old women were like, you know, scary old cougars or something. Now they're, they're like teenagers to me. And kids in their 20s, you know, they're, they're like 10-year-olds. <laughs> they're, they're just like, you know, complete, uh, complete naive infants as far as, as my timeline, perceptual growth through life. Uh, but they're in there and they're having a blast and they always give me a really good table and they treat me really well. And I guess I'm grandpa and they feel grandpa should get some respect. And I get my truffle burger, my once every once in a while truffle burgers. And it is just so amazing. It is just like, it's like concentrated political corruption or something. I think it's fantastic. But I'm sitting there and I'm kind of noticing um, 
kind of you know what what separates people you know e even in that sort of harder charging more selective they've been through the filters of tough schools they've been through the filters of job selection processes you know these are the a team people in the a team city working for the a team corporations and um, I still I still am very aware of, of differences in them you know in terms of I think um, the difference that, that really strikes me is a, a, a quality it's a hard quality to describe or explain but I, I would call it mental energy um, and the, the mental energy that it's manifesting in, in different parts of their brains in different ways um, the uh, you know the ability to to use the frontal frontal regions of the mind to kind of steer the whole structure of thinking uh, it requires a lot of mental energy and I'm, I'm quite aware now I'm, I'm very sensitized when I'm going in there and they're all loud and they're carrying on but I can really pick up on people different levels of, of mental energy and it's a finer and deeper concept than say just self-control although I think behavioral regulation and mental self-regulation is very quite important thing to consider um, but it's it's sort of a, a gestalt sense of this kind of th this ability to summon a lot of juice, a lot of I guess it's just electrical electrical flow through their brains or something, and um, kind of kind of direct generate. Uh, focus, play, um, the ability to go from a very, very focused state to a very defocused state back into a very focused state. And you can really sense the people, okay, you know, that person's going to be, that person's going to be in line, you know, for a sort of a, you know, managerial position. Another person you just, that, that person's got, you know, vice presidential mental energy, ability to kind of focus the situation, keep their stuff sorted out. They can really let go and have a good time, but then, you know, the capacity to really zoom in there. And then another sort of type you figure, you know, much rarer type, you know, that, that, that's like sort of presidential. That person could be a, a division president or, you know, however these banks are structured. You know, once in a blue, blue moon, as rare as, rare as I don't know, hen's teeth, you, you, you come across people like, you know, okay, that, that's CEO material, or that's like, you know, real world-class entrepreneur material. But the, I think that's sort of the, the most important cut, is how, how, how people relate to their minds in an energetic way. Are they, are they like really strong bodybuilders with their minds, and you can sense that they're just constantly giving, on some level, giving themselves some like you know, intense mental weight to work against. Are they constantly keeping their minds in this kind of powerful, focused, deeply thoughtful grip of reality versus people that are just kind of letting stuff kind of stream through them and kind of pass this way and that way without a whole lot of mental interaction? So I think that's what I've I've really noticed. You know, in a sense, my uh, my my hyper burger place, my 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 um, uh, investment banker burger place is uh, well, ain't not like you know most burger places. Um, you can really pick up on these um, these kind of energetic differences, especially when people start drinking, and you notice that people that you know have a real powerful mind. They drink, but they, their voices don't slur, even though they probably have enough in them to be slashed. There's, their movements remain precise. Their thoughts remain precise. Their self-presentation remains. They're, they're still very conscious of their, their surroundings. They're, they're very alert to what's in front of them. They're alert to what's in back of them. They're fully conscious of the consequences of whatever they might be saying. And um, I'm thinking, yeah, that, that probably does take a, a pretty powerful inner mental grip to maintain that when they had like a bottle of wine in them. And other people, they just, you know, they, they just kind of don't. They, they don't lock on in, in that tight level. They, they lock on sort of, you know, in a not quite so intense level. And then there are people, some people who come in there and they have a few drinks, they just lose it. Um, and you can see, yeah, these are people that everybody's going to have a good yuck yuck with, but when it comes to promotion time or when it comes to, um, uh, you know, sort of trusting them with something. Probably the people who have been observed that, that really can't handle alcohol, like they can't, once their little sort of structure of, of self-regulation falls apart, they're just, they're gone for the evening. They might have a, a great time, but chances are other people are going to notice, yeah, we're, we're kind of aware of that person's 
abilities or inabilities to laserize or you know, kind of weaponize their head when necessary. So I think my, um, my, my truffle burger place is, is, is one of those great little learning environments that I'm, I'm very thankful to have. And it's taught me a lot of lessons, but I, I think that lesson of just basic get-go, minute-to-minute, day-to-day, day-in, day-out, level of focused mental energy is is a huge, huge piece of why people go here, people go there, people don't go here, don't go there. So mental energy, that, that's a real 19th century idea, but I think it's as valid today as it was in 1885. So think about that. <laughs>